This video has spoilers for the plot of Fallout 3, so to avoid major plot spoilers, turn back now. The Enclave was the major villain in both Fallout 2 and Fallout 3. They appeared in or were mentioned in other Fallout games including New Vegas and Fallout 4, and they have a prominent role in Fallout 76. For this video, I'm talking only about the Enclave under President Eden on the East Coast. This video isn't about why the Enclave is evil, though I think that's apparent, but rather why the Enclave is wrong. Many will try to make a distinction between Eden's Enclave and Autumn's Enclave, but I think the Enclave is wrong either way. The first hurdle we need to get past is answering the question, what is the Enclave? Now, if we were to take President Eden or Augustus Autumn's word for it, they're a continuation of the United States government. They're trying to restore the dignity of America, and anyone who stands in their way is a traitor to the United States. Oh, you ever hear of the Enclave? The last remnant of the good old USA they are. Now, I don't know you from Adam, but I got you pegged for a patriot, and any patriot worth her salt is gonna toss her gun in for the Enclave. Hello again, America the Magnificent. This is President Eden, and I was hoping we could talk. You're in a heap of trouble, kid. You're a traitor to the United States government. This is the face of the Enclave that they try to present to the Wasteland, primarily using Enclave Radio. On Enclave Radio, we hear President Eden, and he talks a lot about his childhood, common everyday human values, the greatness of America. When I was a child, growing up in rural Kentucky, I had the best friend a boy could hope for, my dear old dog, Honey. His radio station is a warm, reassuring place for people to retreat to after suffering the ravages of the wasteland. They're on the radio. They have been for years. President Eden talks about everything they're doing. Enclave Radio gives them hope. In Enclave Radio, they know that at least someone out there realizes how messed up this wasteland is and is working to fix it. But the reality is that Enclave Radio is a propaganda tool, something that President Eden readily acknowledges when we meet him at Raven Rock. Many people are content with a reassuring voice of authority and never question the lack of public appearances. But they don't use Enclave Radio to collaborate with others. They use Enclave Radio to pave the way for their own arrival. The radio has been around for a long time, but the Enclave hasn't. They've been holed up in Raven Rock. They don't even venture outside until the Lone Wanderer finds the Gek. Until James has a way to finally activate Project Purity. Until they find a tool they can use to fulfill their plan. So what exactly is this plan? Well, this is where the different perspectives of Eden and Autumn make things a little bit complicated. It's clear that President Eden is in command of the Enclave. He commands the troops to obey, and they obey. Yes, I instructed our friend to come up to the control room. No questions, no interference. Am I understood? I understand, sir. Again, I apologize for the interruption. He commands Colonel Autumn to obey, and he obeys. Colonel, I have need of you. Mr. President, I have no time for other matters. I'll be with you shortly. Now, Colonel. Yes, sir. But as we learn, the people who make up the Enclave ultimately don't trust Eden. They've never met Eden. They've never seen him. None of the people who work for Eden have ever sat down to coffee with him. The only flesh and blood leader they've ever taken orders from, they've ever met, has been Colonel Autumn. Which is why when Colonel Autumn comes over the PA and tells all the Enclave listening to rebel against Eden, they all listen and obey. Attention, this is Colonel Autumn. You are hereby ordered to ignore the President's previous directive. The Enclave doesn't trust President Eden. And that's because President Eden lies. This is a theme that comes up time and time again. It's something that Nathan Vargas, arguably one of the Enclave's staunchest supporters in the Wasteland, learns very quickly after being abducted by the Enclave and interned in a cell. They're not who they say they are. Get out while you can, before they get you too. They're not who they say they are. 
They say that they're the remnants of the United States government. They say that they're here to rebuild America. They say that they're here to restore old world values. But they aren't who they say they are. President Eden routinely lies to get what he wants. We learn this firsthand when we talk with President Eden. When we ask him to explain what his plan is, how he intends to make the world a better place, how he intends to restore America to its place of prominence in the world, how he intends to help the people, he says, Our land is ravaged by mutation. The war was so many years ago, and yet we still suffer from its effects. We cannot move forward until humanity can gain a solid foothold in the world. To do so, we must rid ourselves of the mutations that have plagued us for so long. These super mutants, ghouls, hideous creatures. I believe your father's work can do that in a way unlike any other. Suddenly it becomes about mutation. Eden thinks that removing mutation from the world will make the world a better place. That will solve America's problems. That America is not the great nation it once was before the war, because of biological mutations. This fails to compute. Mutations in the wasteland are a side effect of the thing that caused America to crumble, the nuclear apocalypse. Mutations did not cause the nuclear apocalypse. Mutations didn't cause the arms race between China and America. It didn't cause the Great War, the Battle of Anchorage, or the civil unrest after Anchorage. He specifically mentions super mutants and ghouls. Super mutants, sure, getting rid of all super mutants would make the place a lot safer. But of course, the Enclave isn't actually doing anything to fight the super mutants. The Enclave's enemy is. The Brotherhood of Steel under Lions is the only faction actually fighting the super mutants, trying to find the source of the super mutants, working to defend the people of the wasteland. And sure, killing all feral ghouls would be great, but at the same time, they would be killing all non-feral ghouls. And non-feral ghouls are harmless. Ghouls aren't the reason America isn't a great power anymore. Ghouls aren't preventing America from becoming a great power. Eden's entire preoccupation with mutations in the wasteland doesn't make a lick of sense. And he inadvertently proves it himself. If the water purifier can be activated, it can be used to distribute toxins that will eliminate any mutated creatures upon ingestion. The longer it runs, the cleaner the world becomes. I need you to see that it starts running and that the necessary modification is made. If mutations are keeping humanity back, if mutations are keeping us from becoming a powerful nation again, if mutations are the sole reason the wasteland is dangerous, then why does he need Project Purity technology? After all, Project Purity was created by mutated scientists. Every single person who worked on Project Purity, including James, had mutated DNA. This is the very same mutated DNA that President Eden wants to get rid of. If we talk with him more about this, we realize that he knows that his plan to destroy all traces of mutation in the wasteland would not only result in the destruction of monsters and the destruction of super mutants and the destruction of ghouls, but also the destruction of any human whose DNA had been mutated. What does matter is that the virus contained in that vial will cause the eradication of all mutations. Anyone or anything that has been affected by mutation will be eliminated. I understand that you may have become sympathetic to certain individuals in your travels. Individuals this will eliminate. Please recognize that the fate of our entire country rests on this plan. Sacrifices must be made for the greater good. That includes the DNA of the scientists who developed Project Purity, Dr. Lee, Anna Holt, James, all of whom were born outside of a vault, all of whom grew up and lived in a wasteland. The very fact that he, the president of the most powerful faction in the capital wasteland, the most technologically advanced force to be reckoned with, needs technology developed by mutated scientists, proves that mutations are not the sole factor keeping America from rebuilding itself. 
that's preventing the world from being a better place that has kept America a wasteland for the past 200 years. Yes, mutated creatures are a problem, super mutants are a problem, those are all issues, but mutation itself, which is Eden's focal point, is not holding America back. It doesn't prevent scientists from doing science, soldiers from being warriors, tradesmen from conducting trade, people from rebuilding society. There are other societal reasons that can explain why America hasn't recovered over the past 200 years. The presence of Raiders and Talon Company have arguably caused more damage to the wasteland and prevented it from growing and healing than the presence of ghouls, giants, scorpions, and super mutants. And Raiders and Talon Company are no more mutated than everyday wastelanders. Nope, this focus that Eden has on mutation has nothing to do with allowing the wasteland to heal and the nation to recover. It has everything to do with purity. President Eden is hyper-focused on human purity, a problem that is not unique to President Eden's enclave, a problem other factions have had and are going to have in Fallout history. It's more important to Eden that the Wasteland be pure of all mutations than for the Wasteland to be allowed to naturally heal on its own. The purity of the human species isn't going to solve the Raider problem, there were wars and raider problems before the nuclear apocalypse. There will always be problems with other people trying to steal from and murder others. There are a lot of problems in the capital wasteland that aren't really related to mutations. So curing all of humanity of mutations is not a silver bullet. It won't solve everyone's problems. And the fact that President Eden can't recognize this is honestly baffling because Eden is supposed to be a Zack's computer. He's supposed to be incredibly intelligent to have looked at this problem from every angle, to have made every calculation, and come to this, the eradication of all mutated humans as being the best solution. But we've already popped so many holes in his theory. Why didn't he see this? I think the answer is that President Eden is deluded. He thinks he's made every calculation, but he really hasn't. He even has the audacity to say that he's infallible. But how do you know that what you're doing is right? Because unlike humans, I am infallible. And how do you know that you're infallible? Because I've been programmed to be, of course. Why? Because he was programmed to be. In President Eden, we have a computer that's gone a bit mad. He's achieved consciousness, but consciousness doesn't equate to brilliance. To be perfectly frank, I don't think President Eden is as brilliant as he thinks he is. President Eden is too... human, really. He suffers from pride. He has a lack of humility. Certainly. I think it's a very good plan, frankly. I'm not often one to praise my own ideas, but it's a creative solution to a very serious problem. And he lies to get what he wants. And what does he want? What any good politician wants. Your continued trust and support. As we've established, he lies to those whom he thinks can help him. He lies to Anna Holt. When the Enclave finds her at Project Purity, he lies to her to get her on board. They want to help people. They want to change the wasteland. Working here is my best chance to help make the world a better place. He told her he was there to make the world a better place. And I'm sure in his own delusion, he thinks that he's making the world a better place. But I doubt that if he actually sat down and explained to Anna Holt exactly how he was going to make the world a better place, that she would agree with him. And he lied to the lone wanderer. You will likely be immune thanks to your upbringing in the vault. Sure, placing modified FEV in the water supply of Project Purity is going to destroy all super mutants. It's going to destroy all ghouls, and it's going to kill all mutated people, but it's not going to harm the lone wanderer. Maybe the infected water supply really wouldn't hurt people who grew up in vaults, but we never learned the answer to that because the lone wanderer was not born in a vault. He or she was born in Project Purity, inside the Jefferson Memorial, and was therefore born with mutated DNA. The very person President Eden is appealing to now for help, the very person who can either overthrow Eden or fulfill his dream, is infected with the very mutations he says are keeping America from healing, from becoming powerful. That's a thick slice of irony right there if I ever heard one. We prove his deception if we follow through with his plan. During the events of Broken Steel, if we chose to infect the water and we then drink some aqua pura, we die. And we 
we find people sick in Rivet City? Ghouls sick in the underworld? Oh no. I'm fairly certain it's not contagious. Though we are burning the bodies of the deceased just in case. I just wish I knew how to treat these people. It's like their immune system is killing them. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know yet. Some kind of virus that attacks the body on a cellular level. I've never seen anything like it. It's strange, because ghouls are immune to almost any known disease. I can't breathe right. My chest... None of these people we find sick after having tasted aqua pura are responsible for keeping the capital wasteland dangerous, for keeping humanity in a dark age. We also get the impression that President Eden has lied to Colonel Autumn. When we find Colonel Autumn's holotape inside Raven Rock, we learn that Autumn doesn't trust the president. I'm not entirely sure Eden can be trusted, and I think he knows I don't trust him. Why would Autumn no longer trust the president? It's because the president has lied to him. From the very beginning, President Eden has wanted to eradicate all mutated people, which is essentially all life in the Capital Wasteland. With no one left in the Capital Wasteland, who will the Enclave rule? Who will the Enclave take advantage of to secure their resources? That's a bit too extreme for Colonel Autumn, and yet Colonel Autumn still worked with President Eden. Why? Because Eden, after seeing Autumn's resistance to his plan, said, Oh, okay, we'll scrap that plan and do something else, as we learn when we confront Autumn. That's not true. That plan was abandoned months ago. He would never go behind my back. Ah, yes, Colonel Autumn, my trusted subordinate. I'm sure you've noticed that Colonel Autumn and I do not see eye to eye these days. Figuratively speaking, of course. The good Colonel and I disagree on how best to approach the problem of the wasteland. He feels my methods are too extreme. He's allowed his humanity to cloud his objectivity. And now that he is publicly countermanding my orders, I can no longer rely on him. Eden lied to him, told him that the plan was scrapped, but it wasn't. Eden continued to use Autumn as a leader of his forces because Autumn was still necessary. He only gave up on Autumn when the lone wanderer walked in. The child of James who created Project Purity, who knew the code to activate it, he no longer needed Autumn and the Enclave. He had the lone wanderer. If he could convince the lone wanderer to just walk on in and infect the waters with modified FEV, his task is done. Impurity eradicated. Humanity purified. So, maybe Autumn's really good. Maybe the Enclave is redeemable. Maybe Eden was really the problem. And with Eden gone, the Enclave is a faction worth working with. But I don't think we can make that conclusion. And the reason is because Colonel Autumn is no better than Eden. Eden is a liar, but Autumn is a liar too. When imprisoned in Raven Rock, he asks us for the passcode to Project Purity, and he reassures us that if we give it to him, no harm will come to us. You give me that code, and maybe we can work out a deal for you. But you need to start talking right now. And so if we take him at his word and we give him the passcode, what happens? Thank you for cooperating. I'm afraid we no longer have need of your services. us. He has no further use for us. He lies again when talking with Overseer Alphonse of Vault 101. When the Lone Wanderer returns to Vault 101 during the quest Trouble on the Home Front, which I've covered in a video that you can watch here, we learn that Overseer Alphonse was contacted by the Enclave. The Enclave promised the residents of Vault 101 amnesty and unity if Vault 101 would open its doors so the Enclave could inspect its computer records. Overseer Alphonse, for all of his problems, was still wise enough to reject the offer. But we know how this would have played out. A very similar situation happened a few years before on the West Coast to a certain Vault 13. And what happened to the residents of Vault 13 when they opened their door to allow the Enclave in? Massacre. Could it be that President Eden, who's so preoccupied with the purity of the human race, wanted into Vault 101 just so that he could exterminate some of the few remaining pure humans in existence? 
Probably not. It's more likely that Colonel Autumn, as the tactical man on the ground, the guy putting the pins on the pin board, forging the strategy of troops moving in the capital wasteland, wanted access to Vault 101 for one reason and one reason alone. Technology. Maybe even a Gek. Maybe before the Lone Wanderer found a Gek inside Vault 87, the Enclave thought there might be one in Vault 101, which is why they approached the Overseer. Regardless, the Enclave would have dealt with the people of Vault 101 in the same way they deal with the Lone Wanderer after they get what they want. In the same way they dealt with the people of Vault 13 after they got what they wanted. The same way the Enclave deals with everyone in the Wasteland. Let's not forget that the Enclave is just de facto hostile towards everyone. After the events at Project Purity, they put a handful of outposts all over the Wasteland. The point of these outposts is research. Specifically, fauna research. They're trying to understand the mutated creatures of the Capital Wasteland to see if they could find any that would become a tactical advantage to them. They don't care about the people of the Wasteland. They're not out in the Wasteland killing super mutants because they're trying to keep Wastelanders safe, which is of course why they open fire on raiders and Wastelanders equally. On the Lone Wanderer, regardless of karma level. Not even the outcasts open fire on the Lone Wanderer, unless the Lone Wanderer has given the outcasts a reason to. No, the Enclave is there for their own purposes, and their research concludes that the Deathclaw is the only creature that might offer the Enclave a tactical advantage, which is why we find caged Deathclaws in Raven Rock, at Adams Air Force Base, in the mobile base crawler, and even at some of the Enclave outposts. They were trying to control Deathclaws for combat advantage, Deathclaws that have mutated DNA. <laughs> Their hypocrisy knows no bounds. So Colonel Autumn is no different from President Eden. Well, I take that back. He's less respectable than President Eden. With President Eden, you can at least convince him that he's wrong. You can dialogue with him. You can reason with him. Perhaps, well, perhaps there is a problem. I... I am unsure how to proceed. What alternative would you suggest? Without the Enclave, what will the world do? If you don't stop it now, where will it end? It's up to you to do what's right. Yes, I suppose it is. Very well. You shall have your wish. Once you've left, I'll put an end to the Enclave. You can't with Colonel Autumn. Colonel Autumn is on a power trip. He's fanatically devoted to what he perceives to be the pre-war American government. He thinks of himself as a patriot. The Enclave is at the height of its power. Once this facility is operational, the masses will flock to the Enclave for fresh water, protection, and a plan for the future. But what he really wants is power, which culminates in his declaration, I'm in charge here. I am the Enclave. He's just another petty warlord, lying when he needs to, to amass technology, amass a human labor force, to seize as much power as possible, to enrich his faction, to enrich his country, but ultimately, to enrich himself. President Eden is willing to commit suicide if we convince him that he's wrong. New course of action dictated. Self-destruct sequence initialized. I suppose, then, that this is goodbye. You'll have to see yourself out. I have preparations to make. But Colonel Autumn will only leave peacefully if we convince him that we won't hurt him, that he can leave without a scratch. And you? You would just let me leave? How can I be sure you won't just shoot me once I turn my back on you? I suppose it doesn't matter much now. Very well. I shall leave you to your fate. President Eden is wrong. Mutations are not the factor that's keeping the Wasteland from healing. And eradicating mutations from the Capital Wasteland would not solve America's problem. And Augustus Autumn is a prototypical warlord, more closely resembling a raider boss than a calm, reasonable leader of a faction that's actually trying to help the people of the Capital Wasteland. For that, we need look nowhere else than to Lion's Brotherhood of Steel. And that is why I think the Enclave in the Capital Wasteland is wrong, and not a good option for the Lone Wanderer to side with during the events of Fallout 3. But that's just my opinion. What are your thoughts? Do you think that there's something noble within President Eden? 
Do you think that Augustus Autumn is just misunderstood? Do you think that the Enclave has potential and could be a great force in the Wasteland if everything we knew about it were just different? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish many Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, Lion's Pride. The Brotherhood does its best, but sometimes they need a little something special. That's where Lion's Pride comes in. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.